This is the Horror Movie Show on HMPod.com, hosted by Jerry and Mark, your one-stop shop for all horrible movie reviews. From the latest blockbusters and independent films to classics, let Mark and Jerry convince you the world is a dangerous place, though often good for a laugh. Now come and listen to the Horror Movie Show, if you dare. Howdy folks, Jerry here. And Mark. Bringing you another episode of the Horror Movie Show on HMPod.com and the Crypt and iTunes and right here, right now. (laughs) Why not? Listen. Are you listening? I'm assuming you're listening, but I don't really know. I'm not saying anything. No, okay. Because I'm not listening. No. Oh, hell no. I don't... say these things i don't listen to them so uh today we're going to do a uh retrospective on one of our favorite directors larry fessenden uh i was lucky enough to interview him on the telephone recently really the telephone the teleophone yeah and he was uh he was a terrific guy even um answered some questions that i had uh, regarding one movie in a follow-up by email so uh what a what a what a dude He's got quite the resume there. He does, he does. He's got his own production company, Glass Eye Picks. They're producing all kinds of movies, not just horror, but uh, other movies, documentaries, all sorts of fun things. Mm -hmm. We'll be getting to a few of his roles, uh, a few of the movies where he wore the producer's hat, but he's also a director and a writer. But he is best known as an actor, and one of the things he said to me was, Somebody figured out for him that he's died in movies uh, about 120 times, which <laughs> that's a, that's something to brag about. <laughs> he's been in that many movies, or is or has he yeah. been in m- multiple parts, getting killed? More yeah, than no, once? no. I think he's he's been in that many movies, small parts in that many movies. We're going to go sort of from newest to oldest, and uh, this, of course, is nowhere near complete filmography. Of, uh, no, we would have Larry to, Fessenden. yeah. Oh, it would take, <laughs> it'd take, take days. Hours and hours, yeah. <laughs> so, just really briefly, we'll talk on the three movies that he is in that Mark and I put on our top ten list for 2013. The first one being Your Next, starring the lovely Sharni Vinson, another friend of ours. Now, he was only in that for a very short time. At the very beginning of Your Next, he's the neighbor who's murdered. Him and his wife, wasn't it? Yeah, and it's just to put the fear of God into uh, the family that the murderers actually want to kill. It also gives you a good start to a movie. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Let's, let's kill somebody. Yeah, yeah so well, indeed. Let's kill Larry. <laughs> they're, they're warming up. Yeah, Larry, Larry won't mind. Larry dies all the time. Yes, he plays Eric Harson. What a terrific movie that is, though. Uh, Your next uh, sort of goes beyond the the usual slasher movies. Yes, and, we've talked about it a couple times, so we won't go too much in depth. No, not too deep, no. Sharni Vinson refuses to be the victim, and she stands up for herself and yes. the rest of the family and does very well. It's a, a family dinner out in the, what I assume is the country. Suburban house. So, yes, yeah. either that or a very rich section of the country, because mm. uh, the houses are far and few between. Yep. They're having a lovely dinner, obviously not a dinner that happens quite often with the family because yeah, it's once dis- a year dysfunctional thing. Dysfunctional family. And they I think it's Christmas time. Other. Isn't it Christmas time or something like that? Uh, I don't know. It, Any- it doesn't really matter. <laughs> anyway, at one point, this gang of masked thugs start trying to murder these yeah, people so in they, the house. They do begin murdering them. People are dying and with getting arrows in them. With crossbow bolts yeah. and all that, all yeah. that wonderful stuff. Now, it was very entertaining. Yes. I enjoyed the mayhem. <laughs> yes, lots of mayhem. <laughs> and everybody who died deserved it. <laughs> no, that's not true. That's not true. The mum didn't deserve it. Larry deserved it. <laughs> Aw. I don't believe that. In fact, I'll, I'll never be happy to see Larry die in a movie again. The next movie, We Are What We Are, directed by Jim Mickle, written by Nick DeMici, who is, um, who is also an actor. We've seen him in movies. I believe he was in Stakeland, which was another movie produced by Larry. We talked about some time back. Stakeland is very well thought of, a zombie movie. Mm. Larry plays the bearded tenant, and I have to say, I would have to watch We Are What We Are again 
which is about a family of cannibals with their own little rituals. But I'd have to watch it again because I don't remember the bearded tenant that Larry played. <laughs> <laughs> Until you started pointing him out to yeah. me, I really yeah. never noticed the guy. No, he's he's um, just like a normal-looking dude. He's kind of a hillbilly-looking yeah. fellow in most of these... Yeah, roles, it's, there's nothing striking hair. about him. He's got sort of a balding yeah. head on big, the top. Big forehead on him. Yeah. Lots of hair on the sides. Yeah. And typically, sometimes he has a beard, sometimes he doesn't. And he's uh, I, sometimes he wears his false tooth at the front, and sometimes he doesn't. Yeah. He's sort of like one of those character actors, but I, I've never noticed him before. Right. In some of the movies and that And yet were, you've probably seen him yes. a dozen times. Yeah, I yeah. have no idea he was yeah. in Jug Face. Uh, yeah. We are where yeah. we are and all well, that. Well, ju- ju- that's the next movie we were going to talk about, Jug Face 2013, written and directed by Chad Crawford Kinkle. Larry plays Suston, who is the father yeah, of the which is girl. a ma- major, major role. Character. Oh, absolutely. And he's he's, he's sort of the sort of a religious leader of the little town. Yeah, an elder does a wonderful job. He's a great yeah. actor. Yeah, because some of these movies that we are going to go in depth on that we haven't discussed before, he has some major roles in. Yeah, him. he's a great actor. I enjoy his performances. Yeah, yeah. So he's lots of it's nice to be a man of many hats. Yeah, the way wear, he does. wears many hats. Yeah. yeah. Because he has the the joy of being able to just be an actor. Right. Or he can produce a a thing and not be in it at all. Yeah. Yeah. Or he can direct it, and sometimes he's in it and sometimes he isn't. Yes. So, you know, he's a very talented person when it comes to things like that. Multi-talented, as they say. Now, the... um the most recent movie that he directed and his company also produced is titled Beneath. That's from last year. He was producer, director. Uh, it was written by Tony Daniel and Brian D. Smith. We've already reviewed it, so again, I don't want to get into great detail, but Larry tells me he was always a big fan of Jaws. Mm -hmm. He just loved that movie. It came out when he was a kid, and if not the first thing he ever did with a camera was to make his own version of Jaws. He made a paper mache shark and put it in the water and it fell to pieces. (laughs) But uh, yeah, yeah, he... he, he, You have to to really shellac that. Yeah, you do. do. (laughs) Get it. Yeah, yeah. A lot of lead weights to get it to sink. Yeah. And uh, he designed the uh, the giant fish in Beneath. That was one of the things I really liked about yeah. the movie. Is yeah, the it fish is. looks good. It, it does, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah. It's lots of fun. Those big poisonous looking spines that his giant uh, carnivorous fish has on his back, those are porcupine quills. Are they? Or at least they're designed to look like porcupine quills. The story is that the six high school seniors yeah. are celebrating graduation and they decide to take a, a weekend off at this lake. One of the friends knows. Yeah, one of the uh, native friends goes up to his old ancestral beginnings. You're making it sound like some sort of Native American. In fact, he's just a kid. You mean he grew up there. Yeah, he yeah, grew up yeah. there, and he knows about this fish. Yeah. In this yeah, yeah, this yeah. Everybody lake. there knows about this fish. It's very simple. They want to go to a campsite on the other side of the lake, and they they only make it halfway. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Because and from then on, everything is hell. Because the, the bossy jocks decide, let's all stop in the middle of the lake and have a swim. And the guy who's from that area says, no, 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 let's keep going. And they ignore him. And that that's the he's major kind of, flaw. He's, he's kind of a freak, the, the guy who's who Yeah, that's the, the major flaw of this movie is the fact that he doesn't warn them. No. He doesn't say, well, there's something in the yeah, lake. Don't even Don't if he's that. never seen the thing yeah. in the lake, you know, <laughs> he knows that there's a legend there. He's heard. Yeah. <laughs> and instead of uh, warning them, he doesn't, and, and things go bad. Very bad. The nice thing about this is Larry directs this. Yep. It's a small cast. Yes. The set is a rowboat. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's right. The, the only difficult part, I guess, was filming on water. Yeah, Larry said it essentially took twice as long. It, he's, you know, somebody wants to go to the bathroom, you have to send the little motor gif out to pick them up, take right. them to shore, back they come again. The camera and everything is on a raft right near the rowboat and so you know that's rocking that's moving around oh it's just one thing after the other i can imagine that there would be they, a lot of wind blowing up yeah. at certain times sure and, and anything shot on water water world jaws all these movies pretty much doubled their budget from what they were expecting right. even though jaws part of it was in a tank 
Oh, sure. Much of it was. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. I can imagine The Abyss being very expensive and all of yeah. Cameron's movies on water. <laughs> yeah, indeed, <laughs> indeed. Very Titanic, expensive. all that. <laughs> most of, most of the, uh, the freezing cold scenes in Titanic, of course, were done in a tank. But yes, a- any time that you're shooting a movie on open water, it's a big drag. Now, with, in this case, there was no tank. I mean, I'm sure yeah, they were on a, a real lake yeah, yeah. with real yeah. large fish in it. With a, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, pretty, pretty sure the one thing that isn't real is the uh, is Larry's fish. Uh, but it's really well done. because It is. And yeah. it, it, I, can, I can see it being difficult because the, the camera sometimes has these high shots yeah. looking down on the boat right. and the fish yeah. s- swimming next yeah. to it. Yeah. So that, they must have had some sort of boom and that raft yeah. must have been pretty big no i no mark try simplifying it that could be on a dock and the boat in close to shore could it doesn't be. have to be in the middle of the lake just because it's set there it's called cheating yes <laughs> they cheat all the time yeah yeah overall that, that's, ha- that's funny though let's make it as difficult for ourselves as possible that's what uh jackson does with the hobbit movies oh <laughs> lord really he always does it the most difficult way <laughs> possible. But he shoots for all three movies at once. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I'm things. just always amazed that <laughs> when I watch the uh, extras on The Hobbit, I mean, I just, th- what they did. Yeah, yeah. And you're going, why didn't they just use some CGI? Yeah. It would have been much simpler. Yeah. No, instead they design these goblin suits that are are translucent right. and have these muscles going. Yeah. And then yeah. they find out they don't work. Yeah. They have to CGI yeah. it in any yeah, way. Yeah. You know how many hundreds of thousands yeah, well, of dollars of wastage? He started off dealing with puppets on film, so <laughs> he's still doing it. Uh, okay, well, let, we, as I say, we've already talked about that movie. So let, let's we've got four movies here that Larry had a hand in that we haven't talked about before. So So let's get on to those. The first one... Is one that I know Mark is not a fan of. 2012 movie called The Comedy, oh. um, produced by Larry's Glass Eye Picks, directed by Rick Alverson, written by Alverson, Robert Dunn, and Colm O'Leary. It stars Tim Heidecker, Eric Wareheim. Uh, you might know them from Tim and Eric uh, Awesome Show, which was really crazy adult swim show a few years ago. No, it didn't know. Comedian, performer, friends of theirs, Jeffrey Jensen, James Murphy, Greg Turkington, several lovely young women, Caitlin Shile, Alexia Rasmussen, and Liza Kate. I think I'll describe it quickly, and then you can tell us all why it's a bad movie, Mark. <laughs> This is a slice of the main character's life, Tim Heidecker's character, Swanson's life. He's a 35-year-old slacker, a guy who's living off dad's money. He's a trust fund kid, and he's never grown up. He continues to be a jackass, a waste of space, and he's beginning, I think, because he's facing his dad's imminent demise... He's beginning to understand just what a ridiculous creature he is. And that's where the comedy, that's the title of the comedy, because this is not a funny movie. No. It's not a horror movie either. It's a movie about a guy who's realizing that his life and he himself is a joke. And that's what the comedy means. Yes. So Anything else? Well, I mean, that's that's it in a nutshell. Okay. This This is a movie... As somebody somebody said, I read this online yesterday, this is one of those movies which you either love or you hate. And I loved it. I saw a lot of myself in this character. I see a lot of most everybody I know in this character. Yeah, well, I, I didn't see any of it. No. It seemed to me that there was no script. They just got a bunch of guys together, had some dialogue, talked about whatever they well, felt. They had dialogue. They, they talked about whatever they wanted, and they just kept going until they had something to, to cut. He was indifferent to life. I was indifferent to his whole life and this film. I just felt I was wasting my time watching this guy's life. Really? Yeah. Ah, there was just nothing there. You couldn't identify with him at all? None. Not whatsoever. He's got everything. And he's blown his whole life. And I'm sorry. But that is the tragic point. Yeah, but it's such a... That he's got everything, and so he's never... Ever. It's all been handed to him, and he's never had to work a day in his life. And he takes these crap jobs just to do them, but he's just essentially a giant child. 
Yeah. And there are so many young men like that today. To me, it's like watching paint dry. Well, yeah, but I mean, that's his attitude. He picks up the waitress. He takes her to the nice boat that he lives on, the nice sailboat. And they're getting along great. They're having their drinks. They're smoking some grass. Everything is cool. And it looks like they're going to make love. And she has a grand mal epileptic seizure. And he sits beside her on the couch, finishing his drink, chewing the ice, watching her have her seizure. Mm. And to me, that just sums up this guy and so many other young men. He's never truly had to struggle in his life. And he he is indifference personified. Exactly. And that's how I felt towards him, towards this movie, indifferent. Yeah, yeah, but, well, see, I, I found it engaging because I think that's a great point to be made. That is a tremendous thing to say, that look at all these sad, sad people. I can understand that point of view, but at the same time, as a entertainment, this is like watching paint dry. It's, I don't find it entertaining whatsoever. Okay. All right. There's no entertainment for there. It's just It's another one trying. of those movies where Mark's opinion is wrong. It's just so trying... <laughs> And like you said, I agree with that. Either you're going to love it or you're going to yeah, hate it. Yeah. And I just hated it. Mark, you, Mark hated you obviously it. loved it. Yeah, it, it has nothing to do with horror whatsoever. No, no, no. But, but so we're doing in, a Larry. In effect, when I was watching this, yeah. I was thinking, why the hell is Jerry having me watch this? You didn't why? notice it was a Larry movie. No, I yeah. didn't know at the time. <laughs> and I'm going, why is this on the list? I have better things to do than watch a movie like this. Well, see, I, Give me a, a I, horror movie. I knew it would bother you, so I put it on the oh, list. Oh, it bothered me. <laughs> and I was actually mad yeah. <laughs> that you had this on the list. All right. I mean, there are other things that he's done that I would much rather have preferred right. to watch. Right, right. Well, so we'll don't s- do that again. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think it was important that you see it. So that I could annoy you. Oh, you did. All right. This this next movie, I'm sure we'll have lots to say about this one because uh, there's no way that uh, you didn't like this one, Mark. It's from 2008. It's called I Sell the Dead. And uh, again, produced by Larry's Company, written and directed by Glenn McQuaid. It stars Dominic Monaghan from Lord of the Rings and also Lost as Arthur Blake and our friend Larry Fessenden as uh, Willie Grimes. Now, the two of them are body snatchers. In the 18th century. Yes. This is a comedy. It's a horror comedy. And, oh, my goodness, they just go all over the place with this. And Ron Perlman's in it as well. Doing doing what might be the worst British accent <laughs> ever. And, and I, he's I like Ron it. Perlman. Oh, I love him. He's, he's a terrific guy. But, uh, oh... He's really bad in this one. He's he's probably the weakest thing in yeah, this Yeah, but movie. he's only in sort of one scene. He's the... He's, no, it's not one scene, but it's one scene caught up yeah, throughout the he, whole movie. He's the thread that carries the movie from beginning to end, because Dominic Monaghan and Larry's character, they've been captured by the authorities, because they're not just body snatchers, but they've also been killing people, or at least they've been involved with murder. And so Larry gets hanged. Oh, no, he gets beheaded right yeah. at the very beginning. And yeah. what, why the English are using a guillotine, I'm not sure, but they are. <laughs> so his head gets a little... Did they never use a guillotine? No, it's more like a... It's axe. a French thing. Yeah, it's it? a French thing, yeah. But, but it looks good. <laughs> it's very dramatic. It was... This is a comedy. It, oh, it's a horror comedy. Uh, yes, yeah, it, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I really liked it. Yeah. Uh, and I thought Larry did a great job yep. in this thing. Cause good it, accent, hey? I was yeah. really, uh, really surprised at how uh, good his I thought, English accent was. It was the production values were really high in this yeah, one. They, yeah. they obviously had a budget. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, very good movie. It's funny because they start off, he's a he's, kid. Uh, Dominic's character is a child. Yeah, and he gets brought in by Larry to help him rob graves. Yes. Because Larry's not paying him. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he's not yeah. paying him anything. Yeah, but he's, he's looking after him. I yes. mean, this is like an orphan child, and Larry is saddled with him, and he can, always, either, he's he can either kill the kid and give the body to the doctor the who he works for, yeah. or he can raise the kid up, and they become... So fast friend, they become back. Family, I guess so back in the 18th century, the doctors were really uh, missing a lot of cadavers to yeah, work on because yeah. they were 
Perfecting the art of medicine. Well, it was illegal and it was, in, e- yeah. in England, certainly, in much of Europe, to uh, desecrate the dead. Right. Yeah. So they had to basically do it underground. Yeah. Literally. literally. Yeah, well, <laughs> that's, that's in where their the bodies face, were. In yeah. their cellars yeah. and things like yeah. that. So they would hire these guys to go rob graves. Yes. So that they could practice their art. Okay. Yes. However, in, in this movie, they've made the doctor, played by Angus Scrim. Dr. Quint, they've made him in, into a monster. He's abusing the bodies. He's not <laughs> He's not cutting them up to learn anything. He's just some sort of pervert. Well, he gets really spoiled because at the beginning they were really robbing graves. Yes. But then he gets a fresher body. Yeah. And next thing you know, it's like, I want the freshest stuff yeah. that you can find. In other words, how you get them. Yes. Get them. Yeah. And he's only giving them enough to survive on. Yeah. They're not making a lot of money. No. No. And then they come across a ghoul, <laughs> yeah. which is a resurrected... Well, it's a it's like a zombie. It is a zombie. They come yeah. across zombies. Yeah. And they discover, quite by accident, and for some reason, a stake in the heart. It's dead. As yeah. soon as you take the stake yeah. out, it's back <laughs> that, alive. And that is so funny, because they, Larry, Larry is like... Pushing it in, pulling it out, pushing it in, <laughs> pulling it out, and the zombies ah, oh, ah, oh, ah, oh. <laughs> <laughs> so there's some, there are some funny parts in it, and the the fact that they found zombies, yeah, yeah, who are acting more like vampires, yeah, for yeah. some reason, and, and, that, that's and they the are getting, and they're very popular yes. within the medical. Uh, yeah. Because uh, yeah. zombies, for some reason, yeah. are different, <laughs> yeah. and they want to know everything yeah. about them. Yeah. There was a twist at the end with Ron Perlman character. And I saw yeah. it coming a million miles right, away. Right, right, right. And but at the same time, I and, really, and a nice twist with with Larry's character. Yeah, yeah. I don't want to give any of that away because it's it's really good fun. If you haven't seen I Sell the Dead, of all the movies that we talk about today that we haven't talked about before, I would say I Sell the Dead is the most fun. Yes. Yeah. It is yeah, it's definitely most most fun. What about the scene with the aliens? Yeah. Oh, it's so good. <laughs> I, I, again, let's not let's not talk about it too much, but the bug-eyed aliens from outer space yeah, the make an appearance. The and, oh, it's so funny. They're small. <laughs> yeah, it's just like, you know, what else could we throw in? What else? Oh, well, how about some aliens? Why not? Aliens in the 1700s. So they've got zombies, <laughs> aliens. Uh, they, they come across all sorts of things. <laughs> it's a very entertaining movie. Yeah, the um, the villains of the piece, apart from Dr. Quint, the villains are uh, this sort of collective known as the House of Murphy. Who are their rival kind of yeah. body snatchers. Yeah. And, and they deal in, in ghouls as well. This is the difference between uh, a body snatcher and a ghoul. A ghoul they define as someone who's snatching the bodies of the zombies. Right. I think. I think. Uh. I mean, they play a little loose with the rules, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> this is not history. But the uh, monstrous Murphy family, there's a woman in the family who's probably the scariest of them all. She wears a, a mask all the time, and she's so hideous under this mask that at one point, Larry and Dominic and a zombie that they have dug up, the zombie is in a cage, and the Murphys have got hold of them, and they've tied Dominic and Larry up, and the zombie is in the the cage, and he's sort of pawing half-heartedly at Larry and Dominic. And, yeah, I that and, was... and the woman, the female Murphy, comes over and takes her mask off. And not just the two humans, but the zombie goes, oh, <laughs> the zombie is so terrified of the way this woman looks that he breaks out of the cage and, and, and attacks her. Oh, it just it cracked me up. This is one of the funniest movies I've seen in a long time. Well, we recommend it. Yeah. I All know. right, let's go on to another movie. So the next movie is uh, The Last Winter, 2006 movie, produced, directed, and co-written by... Larry, uh, along with Robert Lever, another writer, stars uh, James Legros as uh, James Hoffman, Ron Perlman again as Yay, Ed, Ron! Ed Pollock, Connie Britton as Abby Sellers, Zach Guilford as Maxwell, and Kevin Corrigan as Motor, and uh, Larry shows up in a uh, small part as Charles Foster, which I couldn't help but think is a uh, tip of the hat to Charles Foster Kane, the character played by Orson Welles who also wrote, directed... Oh, yeah, uh, he does that. Larry does that. Produced and acted he, in Citizen Kane. He uses uh, names. Yeah, yeah, uh, it's a nice old, little... Old uh, writers, directors. Yeah, Charles Foster. Yeah. This movie I had seen before. I'd seen it on regular late-night TV. 
This and the next movie we'll be talking about are um, sort of environmental movies. Yeah, yeah. And I, and I asked Larry about that, and he said uh, it isn't that he's a great outdoorsman. He's not even particularly environmentally minded. It's just the stupidity the short-sightedness of human beings and how easily we destroy our environment for short-term profit. Profit, yeah. yeah. It's nothing new, but it's great that he's um, he's trying to touch on that in his movies. You want to describe what The Last Winter is about? Well, it's based in Alaska. It's an oil company that is trying to drill up yeah. there on the tundra. Yeah. Unfortunately, the initial gang they send up there, the crew, are supposed to be doing some mapping and they're supposed to be doing some uh, testing of the tundra to figure out if it's safe enough to go up there. They like to drill when it's a little colder. Well, they they want to be, they need to build ice roads so they yeah. can bring in the heavy equipment. Yeah, unfortunately, and, and the weather is not cooperating. Yeah, too, it's too warm, and yeah. uh, and they figure that the the equipment will sink yeah. into the tundra yeah. if they brought this heavy heavy thing. And Ron Perlman has gone up there. He'd been gone for five weeks or so. It's his company. And it's his... Is it his company? Well, yeah, it's, I believe so. He's the big boss. Well, he's right? the big boss of yeah. the crew. Yeah. He's gone up there to try to figure out what's lagging. Why is it we yeah. can't... Yeah, he, j- he just wants work. to get it done. Yeah, he get wants to done. get her get her done. Yeah. Unfortunately, the weather is not cooperating. It's too warm. And everybody's telling him that. The machinery can't come up. But he says, well, we got to get it up here. we got to start drilling. He's battling the guys who are all already up there, like James LaGrosse's character, James Hoffman. He's um, an outsider who's legally stuck on the team as a sort of environmental consultant. consultant. And he's saying, no, 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 you can't do any of this. And uh, the Perlman character is saying, but we are going to do it regardless of what you say. I don't care about the environmental consequences. Right. Actually, a couple of the people, the main characters are like that because they know it's their job. Yeah. And the woman in the movie as well, is Abby. That she's determined to get the job done Yeah, as well. she, she's a company girl. She's on the Perlman side, but she's been sleeping with environmentalist character. You know, I get the idea she likes him, but mostly she's trying to play him. She's trying to manipulate him because At the same time, she's yeah. a company girl. Yeah, yeah, she's trying to get him to sign off yeah. on it. So everybody is playing everybody else. Now, there are weird things yeah, happening. Yeah, what are some of the weird things that are happening? The winds, the... Yeah, uh, yeah the, this guy's in his tent. He's in sort of a, a shelter that he's built yeah. that he works out of with all these charts and everything. Yes. And he's inside it, and there's this wind wrapping all around, yeah. and he, he figures there's a storm outside, and he jumps outside for some reason, and there's no storm. It's no. all in the shelter. No, no, there was, because the hoof marks are there. The ghosts of caribou, you know, stampeding around, and that's what they hear. And they can feel the wind that they cause. A lot of it happens at night, yes, as well. Which is another thing. They have day and night up there. Okay, okay. you know, we we talked about that with the thing in yeah. Antarctica. The only place in the Arctic or Antarctic where it's completely dark is very close to the pole. Yeah. If you're further away, you do still have day. No, and I night. know. I, I realize that, but yeah. it's a very short day. It would be be a couple hours, maybe three, four hours. But shorter the closer you get. Antarctica, for example, is enormous, so you can be quite far away, out near the edge, like the guys in the thing are, and you would get a good amount of daylight. Yeah. So, you know, we were wrong about that. And the same in Alaska. It's not as if Alaska is, the North Pole isn't even in Alaska. It's it's much further north. So you're going to get day and night, even in winter. It'll be a very, it's in February, and and they actually get some rain, and they're really shocked at, yeah, yeah, at yeah. that. And there's also an old well that was originally up there and they they it's capped, test well. Yeah, they they had capped it like right. in the 40s or no, something. No, 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 no. That, that or the was the 80s. Yeah, that that was that was pretty recent. Yeah, it was yeah. in the 80s and yeah. there was some sort of story line why they left it there. There well, was something that I was know there's, happening. There's, there's a worry about uh, what they call sour gas, which yeah. is poisonous natural gas. Best thing about this movie that I liked was that plane crash. Oh, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Very realistic. Yes, yeah. At one Supp- point... It's supposed to be the rescue flight, and they're, and it's coming in, and things go wrong. Yeah, a number of people have killed themselves, are been killed, yeah. and at that point, Ron Perlman says, okay, it's time to uh, get everybody yeah. out of here yeah. for some R&R because people are going nuts. Yeah. 
they call in a plane. Yeah. And the plane is on its I think its, it's, it's a regular approach. plane. It's it's the regular flight that's going to come in. And it's it's a small one propeller kind of yeah, plane, little Cessna. Uh, I I wouldn't have thought they could carry that many people, but I mean, well, they're just the going to get the worst of them out. They're on their approach, and all of a sudden, this wind blows up and yeah. just pushes them right into the building yeah. that all the other people are in. Now it up. crashes through that building quite realistically yeah. and spews fuel on yeah. everything, <laughs> and everybody's lit on fire, and people are running around and they can't douse the fire because it's fuel that's burning off them some people are horribly burnt and some people die as a result and some people are injured and oh very well done this movie and the next movie that we're going to talk about wendigo it's like larry has taken normal people Mm -hmm. and put a super phantoms running around in the mix right some sort of spirit well, yeah, happening. something supernatural. Supernatural is, is happening. Is and, but and the normal the, people, these people are grounded people. They're nothing, you yeah, know, they're no yeah. heroes or anything like that. They're just normal family or a normal work group. Right. They have and to, an extraordinary it, And it's not like the thing at all. I no. mean, the thing was completely different. Even though it's all done very much the same, the snow and the... Yeah. and the isolation. Isolation. And, and it was an entertaining movie. This last winter and Windigo, both the creatures are very. You just get flashes of yeah. them. You don't get a lot of participation no. from the. And from I, the I, I do character. believe the Wendigo is is even mentioned in the last winter yeah. because there are a couple of uh, Native Alaskans, Inuit Alaskans, yeah. in, in the group, and uh, I think I think they mention it. I'm not sure if the Wendigo was was known throughout North America. Of course, it's, it's, it's a, a convenience for the movie. Yeah, the idea that it's a shape shifting sort of animal, and that factors directly into the next movie we'll be. Talking yeah, about. I, and I found that both of them were in the snow, both mm. of them up north. Mm. You know, it's like I was kind of wondering if he has this fascination with snow. <laughs> well, that's, like I say, you know, I was I was wondering. I asked him about the environmental aspect because it has that sort of it calls that to mind the fact that they're both dealing with sort of native spirits yeah yeah definitely now he shot part of it in iceland oh is that right yeah i didn't notice i was looking at the credits and there's a lot of long names (laughs) it's like iceland crew yes rasmussen here i see yeah okay Overall, I thought it was an entertaining movie. I okay. thought it's not um, a really action-packed movie. It's more of a mystical movie. I yeah, think. it is. It is. In, in watching it the second time, I enjoyed it more. The first time, I found it a little on the slow side, but mm. I liked it more the second time. So, yeah, let's get on to the last movie we're going to be talking about uh, today. However, there's there's so many other movies I could not find a copy of Habit, for example, which was, I think, the first feature that Larry directed. I would like to have seen that. One of the things that I asked him about was he is in Martin Scorsese's movie, Bringing Out the Dead, with Nicolas Cage. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was asking him what it was like working with Scorsese, and he said that um, he was... So pleased that Scorsese knew of his movie Habit, and and they talked a little bit. You know, I mean, my gosh, talk director to director with Martin Scorsese. Mm. Jeez, I, I, I can't think there's a better living director today than Scorsese. Possibly, Peter Jackson? No way, no way. <laughs> po- possible, the, the only other possibility I would say would be the Coen brothers. Yeah. And I'm talking living actors, uh, living directors, <laughs> but, uh, you know, I guess Kubert trumps them all, but uh, that's just my pathetic opinion. It is. So, Wendigo, 2001, again, Larry was uh, director and writer on that, and he's also edited this movie. It stars uh, Jake Weber as George, the dad. Patricia Clarkson as his wife, Kim. Eric Per Sullivan as their son, Miles. John Spiridakos as Otis, who's sort of the hillbilly villain. He's also in I Sell the Dead. He plays Cornelius Murphy, just to mention him from that. And uh, Christopher Winecoop plays the sheriff in Wendigo. I guess you could say this is pretty much a straight-up horror thriller, isn't it? But with some nice, some nice twists and I don't know. Uh, it, again, it, I find it more mystical than horror. Okay. Yeah. So the mystical thing about it is that you hear about the legend. It's mostly the son. The son's yeah. really the only one who who believes. He hears 
this legend of the Wendigo, which is a, from a mystical man who disappears. Yes, and nobody else sees. Yeah, it doesn't seem to actually exist. That, that's in a in a, a Native uh, American drugstore. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, <laughs> and, the little five and dime store. Yeah. So mom and dad and their son Miles. Remind me, I'm blanking here. They've okay, come to this little town. Yeah, they're they're on their way for a weekend at a, a house that of a friend of theirs. A cabin. A cabin. Okay. So they're traveling north. They hit. Oh, that's a oh, they hit a deer. That's a deer. Right. They, they hit a big buck, and, yeah. and and that's right. And and then they then they have to deal with Otis. Yeah, and, Otis and his, and his friends, they're hunters mm-hmm. that were tracking the buck for a long time, yeah. for hours. Yeah, 24 hours, I guess. And yes. Otis, the, the leader of the, the group, is kind of peeved at the, the family at the dad. Yeah. for hitting the, the this buck and breaking its yes, antler, because right. now he can't get top dollar for the head. Yeah. Well, or he just wants to keep it, whatever. I, no, it's because was he it said... Was it business? Yeah, it was business. Oh, okay. He says he, he couldn't get as much now. Right, right. They have this little standoff yeah. between the father and this Otis. And the psycho. They end up calling a tow truck, and then at, right when the tow truck gets there, Otis decides he's going to pull him out he of the drift. He can help. Because yeah. he's stuck in a drift. Well, it's mud, but there you go. So he pulls him out at the last second, yeah. even though they've been sitting there for I know. A, an yeah. hour yeah, or yeah. two, <laughs> waiting for them to load the deer onto that's, their truck. That's Otis screwing with them. Yeah. He's a mean SOB. The family gets to the cabin, and then they the mother is, I guess, some sort of therapist because she, mm. she wants to talk to the father, yeah. who is some sort of photographer. Right. And her son, every single discussion is like, how do you feel about yeah, this? Yeah. And what, uh, you know, I know you're <laughs> feeling bad about, you know, yeah. running the, the buck off the road, and this is life and all this stuff, the right. meaning of life and all this yeah. stuff. And, you know, oh, and Otis was this type of person, and, and you know, your father's this type of person. There's yeah. a lot of dialogue yes. like, yeah, like yeah. that. She's almost maddeningly reasonable. <laughs> yeah, maddening, yes. Yeah. That's a good word for it. The son and the father finally go off on a sleigh ride going down this little hill, and all of a sudden the father falls off, and he's been shot. Yes. We believe he's been shot, and it's it's confirmed yeah. Shortly after. Yeah, and so right away everybody's thinking, oh well, Otis did it. He doesn't like the family because yeah. they're actually in his old He's family. Got a lot house. of issues, a lot of resentment. Yeah, they lost. Otis lost the house because right. the, the family just went on bad ways, yeah. and yeah. they ended up losing the house, and, and it was sold to yeah. their friend. And so he's kind of peeved with anybody yeah. in the house because he takes pot shots at yeah. the house every so often. They, yep. find, they find a bullet hole in the in the windows. And a bullet Buried lodged in the, in the wall. Yeah, a couple of times. They, so both the mom and dad find bullets. Yeah, and the boy is kind of freaked out by the Windigo thing. Yeah, yeah, he believes that that anything and bad he's, that's he's, happening to them is because of this hostile native spirit. And, and the Windigo looks like like a half deer, half man. Yeah, it's a monstrous looking. It's got thing. a head of a deer. Yeah, but it's got a body of a huge bear kind yeah, of thing. Weird looking thing. He does show up. Yeah, yeah. When the Otis. <laughs> Is running from the law. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it, not a lot of him. Not no. a lot of him. It's just, no. a, it's just the whole history of him is told yeah. through the dialogue. Yeah, mo- yeah. And then at the end, he actually appears. And and the thing is, he doesn't kill Otis. No. Otis Chases ends up him. in the hospital, and it kind of ends. Oh, I think Otis is dead. No, he looks at the boy when he comes in the hospital. They're oh, staring right. at each other. Okay. Yeah, the kid. Eric Per Sullivan. Wasn't he in Malcolm in the Middle? Yeah, he's the, the he's, youngest. He's the youngest kid, so he made this before Malcolm in the Middle. He does a really good job, I thought. But he was always good in Malcolm in the Middle. Yes, too. he was. He was that odd, yeah. silent kid. Yeah, he was. A, he was the little freak you know? <laughs> <laughs> who had his really odd behavior. Yeah, yeah. Okay, well, I guess we're we're gonna wrap it up there, folks. It's a uh, it's a short episode, but uh, we're glad to talk about Larry Fessenden. We're both big fans of his. Keep going, Larry. Yeah. Love it. We love, love your it. work. Yeah. Make more movies like the comedy just so I can torture yeah. my friend Mark with them. I found that the Windigo and the in Last Winter, sort of, if you look at them in a broad sense, yeah. they're sort of the same storyline. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Both very much uh, looking at the world through the eyes of idiots, you know, ruining and, and it. And mysticism. Yeah, with a little touch of mysticism. All right, folks. That's it. Yeah. So long from J. 